warm welcome to all of you in this lecture on composite materials classification and applications. In the previous lecture of this module, we have seen the various types of materials. We have seen that what are the needs and requirements of developing new and newer materials. We have also seen the challenge of selection that once we have a wide variety of materials available with us, what is the criteria or what are the properties, characteristics that should be taken into account when we are selecting a particular material and for a particular application. So, we have seen the different approaches of developing new materials. If you can refer back to the previous lecture, you will see that either the material is modified internally or the material is modified by the addition of external reinforcements to make a new material. The new material has properties which are better than the properties of the individual components. Now, this is the basic you can say crux of the development of composite materials. Composite as the name suggests already I have told in the previous lecture also that it is made up of two or three different phases which are combined together to develop a new material which has got splendid properties or which has got properties better than the properties of the individual components taken individually or taken separately. So, today in this particular lecture, we would be seeing that what is a composite material, how are the composite materials defined, how are the composite materials classified and then finally, we will see that what are the important applications. Although I may not be able to show so many diagrams related to the applications, but at least we will discuss that what are the important applications for which the composite materials have been developed. So, starting with the lecture, first and the foremost are the queries that comes to the mind when we hear the word composite material. Now, what are these queries in the inquisitive mind that what is a composite? or what is a composite material. These queries are what are the how they are defined, how I define a composite material. Then constituents, if it is a composite in the definition, I get to know that there will be two or three different phases that will be combined together to develop a composite material. Now, what are these constituents? And on the basis of these constituents, how we will see that which type of materials are these or what are the further classifications on the basis of the constituents. Suppose, the polymer is there, a matrix can be a a polymer can be a constituent, a ceramic can be a constituent, a metal can be a constituent and how these dictate the final name or the final type of the product which falls under the category of composite material. Then we have the engineering applications that I have told you that the constituents in the that go into the composite may be different. Now, the constituents basically can be polymers, can be ceramics, can be metals. Now, depending upon the constituents, you will get a new material and what are the important applications of this particular material. So, that is important that we need to understand that composite materials, they have been de defined in a particular manner, what are the constituents that go into the composite material and why these composite materials have been developed that we have seen in the previous lecture that there are new and new requirements coming every day, new and new designs are being developed, new and new service requirements are there and for those service requirements for those designs we need to develop new and new materials. So, these fall under the broad spectrum of the applications that lead to the development of new materials. And then once a new material has been developed, there will always be a question that how it will compare with the traditional or the conventional materials which are already in use. Wood is a very good example of a traditional conventional material which is being used these days in a large number of applications, but wood is a very important commodity all of us know depending upon the green environment. As in the previous slide, the focus these days is on green environment. We need to use materials which are recyclable, which are biodegradable and which do not have a burden on the environment. So, how the new materials that we are developing compare with the conventional or the traditional material that is another important issue that we need to address. Another important point is as it was discussed in the first lecture of this module that once we come up with a new material, we have to find out ways and methods to convert that material into a final product. The conversion process has to be cost effective, the conversion process has to be of high quality, the conversion process has to be accurate and precise, which is although you can say one of the subsets of the word quality. 
So, we need to find out the processing methods that will go into conversion of that particular material into the final product. And finally, once we are processing the material or we are manufacturing the material into the final product, how that process will govern the performance of that particular material when it will be put to use. So, when we are talking of a term composite material, the doubts, the questions that come to our mind have been listed in this slide. I will just read out for you what are the important points to be taken into account. What are the definitions of the composite materials? What are the constituents of the composite materials? What are the engineering applications for which these materials have been developed? How do they compare with the traditionally available material or the conventional materials? What are the various processing techniques and tools which are used for converting them from the raw material to the final product? And finally, if this processing is going to affect the in-service performance of these materials. With all these questions in mind, now we go forward and we try to address these problems or these questions by the help of certain slides which have been uh, developed for understanding the basic concepts of composite materials. First and the foremost, why composite material? This is in continuation to what we have discussed in the last lecture. Composites can be very strong and stiff, yet very light in weight. So, ratios of strength to weight and stiffness to weight are several times greater than steel or aluminum. Several time means it can be 1.5 times also. So, composites can be very stiff, they can be very strong. And therefore, the applications where stiffness and strength are important criteria, their composites can replace the conventional materials like wood and steel, as is very clear from the very first point on this particular slide, that they are light in weight, the strength to weight ratio and the stiffness to weight ratio is better with composites as compared to conventional materials like steel or wood. Sometimes wood is also used as one of the ingredients for a composite material. So, now here we can compare the composite with steel. So, strength to weight ratio is obviously better with composites as compared to steel. The fatigue properties are generally better for common in co than common engineering metals. So, this is a comparison we are trying to do that why do we need to develop composite materials or what are the important characteristics or advantages that we get with composites which are not usually available with the conventional materials. So, fatigue properties are also better with composites. Next point, toughness is often greater too. Composites can be designed that do not corrode like steel. So, they have corrosion resistant property also. Possible to achieve combination of properties not attainable with metal, ceramics or polymers alone. So, what I mean to address here is that there has been a need to develop the composite materials and this particular need has to be uh, justified by the particular applications. So, if we consider the important properties for particular applications, we can see in this particular slide the strength to weight ratio, stiffness to weight ratio, fatigue properties, toughness, other properties like corrosion resistance. All these properties are important when we take into account the composite material. So, composite materials offer numerous you can say advantages over the conventional materials in term of in terms of their properties. What are the important properties like as is very clear if we want lightweight applications, materials for lightweight applications, we will definitely give weightage to the composite materials because they offer us a very important property of strength to weight ratio, stiffness to weight ratio. Suppose we want a material for impact resistance, we will always give advantage to composite materials. Suppose we want a material which has to be having very good fatigue properties, again composite materials have an, have an edge. So, in this particular slide as we have already seen that there are few important properties which are offered by the combination of materials together into a composite materials which are not easily attainable with the conventional materials. And therefore, we can say the title of the slide why composite materials. So, composite materials have to be developed in order to satisfy few requirements which are not being met by the conventional or the existing conventional materials. Now, what are the salient advantages of the composite materials? These days, 
composite materials are finding application in a large number of uh, engineering spectrums. So, we can see that what are the major advantages? The first and the foremost advantage is the tailor made properties. Now, tailor made property just to give you an example, suppose I want to get a uh, trouser stitched according to my size. What is the procedure that I am going to follow? I am going to go to a cloth merchant, buy a piece of cloth and then I will go to a tailor and tell him that please stitch a trouser according to my dimensions or according to my measurements. So, that is the tailor made properties. In composites also, they have the tailor made properties. What do the we mean by the tailor made property in context of composite materials? That if you have a specific requirement or a specific scenario where you want to convert or where you want to change the conventional material by a new material so or suppose a composite material. In that particular application, what are the requirements of that application? You can design the composite material in such a way that it will be able to meet those requirements. So, in a conventional design approach, we follow a very simple procedure. We have a application. We know that this particular in this particular application, the material that is going to bear this much of load and depending upon the load requirement, we select that this type, this is the material which can bear this much of load or the failure strength of this particular material is higher than the load this particular component has to bear. So, let us choose this particular material for this application. But to contra contrary to the conventional approach in case of a composite material, we will design the composite material to bear that particular load. We will select the constituents in such a way that they meet the design requirements. So, tailor made properties mean that we would be looking at the application and we would be designing our material depending upon the application. So, that is uh, you can say the basic meaning of the tailor made properties. Then the second one is the low weight. As in the previous slide, we have seen the strength to weight ratio and the stiffness to weight ratio is better with composites as compared to the other conventional engineering materials. Therefore, they offer low weight. So, as the title of the chapter goes that composite materials classification and applications. So, applications I am giving simultaneously while discussing the various aspects of composite materials. The application in case of low weight are aerospace applications any component or product that has to be made for the aerospace applications weight is the prime criteria. So, these materials offer low weight. So, when a particular application has to be fit or a material has to be found for a particular application and the application is for example, aerospace, the prime criteria is the light weight. So, composites offer light weight. Therefore, for aerospace applications, we will very easily uh, postulate or we can very easily propose the use of composite materials. The third important point on your slide is the good mechanical properties. As we have seen in the previous slide, the fatigue properties, the toughness, the strength to weight ratio, all these come under the mechanical properties. As well as the property which we missed in the previous slide is the impact properties. So, impact, fatigue, strength, all these key keywords or catchwords, these are related to mechanical properties aspect. So, mechanical properties basically are better with composite materials as compared to the conventional materials. So, we can say that this is another advantage of composites as compared to the conventional materials. Then the fourth point on your screen, integral design and parts integration. Integral design approach means that a complex part can be made into a final product in case of a composite in a single shot. Single shot means that these materials sub, uh, sometimes they offer some processes which we would be discussing as a course of this particular uh, module, the processes for making products by polymer matrix composites. We will see that composites offer certain advantages in terms of parts consolidation and integral uh, you can say approach. In integral design approach, a complicated product can also be made in a single shot or in a by a single process. So, uh, complicated parts can be made by a simple approach of any manufacturing process which can be used for making polymer matrix composite. So, integral designs can be made. 
So, which means that there is no need to do a rigorous assembly operations once the product has been made in a single product or in a single shot. And parts integration means that by conventional materials, if we are designing and developing a part, suppose that particular product is made by five different components and those five different components are now assembled together finally, to get a final product. In case of composites, instead of five components, we may be making the complete design in three components only, thus reducing the assembly operations. So, parts integration means that a complete product can be divided into lesser number of parts, if the material chosen for that particular product is a composite materials. On the other hand, if we would have made the same product with any conventional material, we may be forced to break down that complete product into 7 to 8 or at least 5 different components, which would have been developed by one or the other conventional manufacturing processes and finally, would have been assembled into the final complete product. So, composite materials offer integral design approach as well as a parts consolidation, reducing the number of assembly operations. Then, the next point is the inherent surface finish. Inherent surface finish means that once the composite product has been made with the help of the particular mold or the die, the finish that we will get would be of a very high quality or of a very superior quality. So, we need not go for finishing operations in the total product development cycle. The initial steps of a single shot or a near net manufacturing are quite relevant in case of composite materials. The finishing is not finally required and these points specifically address to our chapter on polymer matrix composites. That this module is focused on processing techniques for polymer matrix composites. So, these points are particularly relevant for polymer matrix composites in which the matrix is a polymeric material. So, this we are going to come to the this classification of materials, uh, composite materials into different categories under the same broad family of composites. So, with that we are going to come in a, we are going to discuss that at a later stage, but just to understand that no finishing is required if the material chosen for a particular uh, application is a composite material. Then com uh, composites also offer us corrosion resistance. As in the previous lecture, I have given one or two examples of underwater applications. In underwater applications, sometimes there is a corroding environment. So, the material that has to be or that should be chosen for underwater application should be corrosion resistant and composites offer one viable alternative for engineers who are working in the area of underwater applications. So, because during the processing stage only some corrosion resistant uh, ingredients can be incorporated into the composite materials making them corrosion resistant. And the last step on your screen or the last advantage on your screen is the ease of fabrication and installation. There is a case study in which the whole bridge was converted or was uh, you can say transformed overnight. Why it has been possible? Because all the beams and the columns or uh, the structural members of the bridge were not made or assembled or not fabricated at the site. They were made or fabricated or processed or manufactured in the factory and from the factory the developed components or the developed parts or the developed structural members were brought on site and they were assembled there in the minimum possible time. So, there are numerous other advantages related to the composite materials for specific applications. Now, what are these advantages? Just to summarize what we have covered till now, the advantages offered by composite materials are the tailor made properties, which means they can be made or they can be tailored as per the requirement. They offer low weight, they possess good mechanical properties, they present integral design and parts integration, thus reducing the assembly operations. They provide inherent surface finish they are corrosion resistant and they offer ease of fabrication and installation. And they substantially reduce the amount of installation time, when they are put into specific applications like construction industry, where they are used for making bridges and buildings. So, in this particular slide, we have highlighted that these are the materials being used 
and are the materials for future and are going to see even higher order applications or even wider applications in the near future. Now, what are the basic definitions of composite materials? We have just seen the advantage is that why we are going to use composite materials and what are the specific advantages related to the composite materials. Now, we have come on to the defining or now we have come on to define the material like how the composites are defined. So, according to Kamanduri, composite materials form a material system composed of a mixture or a combination of two or more macro constituents that differ in form and chemical composition and are insoluble in each other. So, this is a very comprehensive definition of the composite materials. You can see there are two, three important points to address in this definition. They form a material system composed of two or more different materials or macro constituents. So, it means that a composite is a combination of two or, throw, two or three different macro constituents. Now, these macro constituents differ in form and chemical composition. So, chemical composition at chemically and physically these two materials can be different or the macro constituents that go into form a composite material can be different chemically and physically and finally, they are insoluble in each other. From that point, I want to address another thing that we will be seeing in the subsequent slides that there is an interface separating the reinforcement and the matrix or till now we have seen that there are two or three different macro constituents instead of highlighting them as matrix and reinforcement which we are going to anyway cover in the next slide. We can just say that there are two macro constituents they are combining together to make a composite materials, but they are insoluble in each other which means suppose this is one macro constituent, this is the another macro constituent. When these two macro constituents are joining together, they are insoluble in each other which means that there is a fine line which is an interface separating the two macro constituents. So, basically a composite in another definition can be said as a combination of two or three different phases with a recognizable interface separating them and these two macro constituents are insoluble in each other. So, this is a very basic definition of composite materials. We can see another definition of composite materials. On your screen you can see composite materials are macroscopic combination of two or more distinct materials having a discrete and recognizable interface separating them. So, again the em emphasis is on the constituents. There are two or three different constituents which can be mixed together, but they are insoluble in each other and there is a distinct interface separating them. In the subsequent slides, we will see a large number of diagrams showing the different types of composite materials, but till now we should be able to understand that composites are basically a combination of two or three different materials or macro constituents which do not go into one another, they are insoluble in each other and when they combine together they form a third material and when these two materials are in contact with one another there is a thin interface which separates the two macro constituents. So, this is the very basic definition of a composite material. So, what is a composite again now? You can see a composite material is formed by the combination of two or more different materials which combined together generate enhanced properties of the developed material. This we have already seen that why we are combining the two materials together because we want to develop a material which has certain properties which we cannot attain by the individual macro constituents or the individual constituents. For example, the roof, there are bars and there is concrete. So, why these steel bars and concrete have been blended together? They have been blended together because we need certain properties which are not easily attainable by the uh, bars alone or attainable by the concrete alone. So, they both these two constituents have been combined together to make a third material which is offering us certain properties which are not attainable with individual constituents. 
So here in on your screen you can see a very simple diagram, a very simplistic view of a composite material. So there is a reinforcement and there is a matrix. So any composite material will have two constituents. Now we are coming on to defining the constituents. Till now we are saying a composite is made up of two or three different macro constituents. What are these constituents called and what are their roles that we are going to see now? The macro constituents are basically called the reinforcement and the matrix. So one of the macro constituents is a reinforcement, another one is a matrix and when the reinforcement and the matrix join together, they make a composite material. So what are the roles of the matrix and the reinforcement that we are going to see now? What is the need of the matrix? Matrix provides the bulk form of the part or product made of the composite material. So majorly the major portion will be the matrix or the continuous phase would be the matrix provides the bulk form. So you can say it will give shape or the size to the composite. When the load is applied on the composite, the matrix shares this load with the reinforcement. Again we can see the example of the roof. In the roof, the concrete is the matrix and the bars are the reinforcement. So whenever some load will act on this particular roof, the concrete will share this load with the reinforcement or in a very plain term we can say it will transfer the load among the various reinforcing agents or the reinforcements or the different types of reinforcement as may be the case in some other composite materials. So we need to understand that composite material is made up of different constituents and these constituents are called the matrix and the reinforcement. Matrix has gone, it got its own purpose, its own you can say requirement and the reinforcement has got its own purpose and, the reinf and its own requirements. So when these two matrix and the reinforcement join together, they lead to a new material which is called as a composite material. So what is the need of the reinforcing element? The reinforcing element reinforces the matrix. So the major load bearing member in a composite material is the reinforcement and the matrix provides support to the reinforcement. Sometimes the reinforcement may be abrasive in nature. If we can say, take an example of a number of ropes held together and when we apply the load, one rope is rubbing against the another rope and they are abrasive in nature. One rope may abrade the surface of the another rope and this particular, find this particular mechanism may further lead to erosion or it may find further lead to the failure of the rope in totality. But if there is a you can uh, say a matrix separating the individual ropes, individual ropes then not be touching each other and the erosion will not be there or the uh, one to one interaction will not be there because there will be a separation between the two ropes with the help of a matrix. So that is one example where we can say the role of matrix is to support the reinforcing elements and provide or transfer uh, media between the load bearing or a transfer media of load acting on the various individual reinforcing elements. And reinforce, reinforcing elements have a prime aim of taking the load or the major portion of the load or the maximum load. So reinforcing elements take the load and matrix provides support to the reinforcing elements and helps to transfer the load among the various reinforcing elements. Now what are the different types of reinforcement? How the reinforcement can be given to the matrix? So the reinforcements can be given in the form of a fiber, it can be in the form of a particle or it can be in terms of flakes. So you have a continuous or a bulk form matrix and you put some fibers into this matrix or you can put some particles into this matrix or for that matter flakes into this matrix and this will give you another material which is a composite material. You have a bulk form, you are adding certain reinforcement into that bulk form and the final material that you are getting is a composite material. So reinforcement can be 
classified into some other categories also that we will see in the subsequent slides. The reinforcement can be continuous in nature, it can be discontinuous, it can further be classified on the basis of its shape, it can be classified on the basis of its chemical nature. Similarly, the matrix can also be of different types, it can be a polymeric matrix, you can use ceramic material as a matrix material, you can use metal as a matrix material. So, you can have different types of matrices, you can have different types of reinforcements and when you combine these matrix and reinforcement together, you will get a composite material. But there would be a recognizable interface which will separate the matrix and the reinforcement. Just to understand, suppose I break a composite material and see, I should be able to distinguish between the reinforcement and the matrix then only we can say it is a composite material, otherwise it can be a kind of a alloy also. So, there is a difference between an alloy and a composite. Now, how can you say that any particular material is a composite material? How can we distinguish between an alloy and a composite material? So, this, these are few broad guidelines which will help us to specify any material as a composite material. Just to uh, discuss these points, let us first take point number 1. If a material has to be classified as a composite material, both the constituents are present in reasonable proportion. As we have already discussed that the resultant properties of the composite are the resultant of a combination of the two macro constituents. There are two macro constituents or maybe three. Now, the resultant properties should be dictated by all the three macro constituents. It should not be finally dictated by one micro constituents only, one macro constituent only. So, therefore, the reinforcement or the matrix or the proportion of the reinforcement of the matrix should not be less than 5 percent or the material which is present in lesser quantity should be more than 5 percent of the total quantity. So, basically, both constituents are present in reasonable proportion. So, the proportion of the material or the matrix or the reinforcement which is lesser should even be higher than 5 percent. It can be a ratio may be 60 to 40, 60 percent proportion of reinforcement, 40 percent uh, proportion of matrix or it can be vice versa, 60 percent proportion of matrix and 40 percent proportion of reinforcement. So, it should be reasonable it should not be like 99.99 percent of uh, matrix and only 0 0.01 percent of reinforcement. So, that type of material we cannot uh, broadly classify as a composite material. Then the second important point, the composite properties are noticeably different from the properties of the constituents. So, the resultant properties that we are getting out of a composite material should be substantially different from the properties of the individual components or the in individual constituents that go into making a composite material. And finally, the last point, a man-made composite is usually produced by intimately mixing and combining the constituents. So, what does this mean? There is a, there are two points to address here. First one is a man-made composite, this is a new term. So, composites are natural also, naturally occurring composites also that we are going to see in the subsequent slides. So, naturally occurring composites are like wood is one example, human bone is another example of a naturally occurring composite, but there are synthetic composites also and our focus majorly is on processing of synthetic composites. So, man-made composite is usually produced or, a, or for that matter we can very easily say a synthetic composite is usually produced by intimately mixing and combining the constituents. So, what does this mean? This means that the constituents are mixed together, but they are not soluble in one another. Again, I am emphasizing when they are mixed together, they form a composite material with the interface separating the two constituents. Now, by now we know what are the two constituents. The constituents are the reinforcement and the matrix. Let me give you another example of a composite material from history. The mud walls which are these days also made in the villages have some vegetable waste or some wheat straw or rice husk added to the mud in order to improve its property. Now, what is the role of these rice husk or wheat straw or any other vegetable waste which is put into the mud? So, we can very easily now 
uh, align our definition of composite materials with this example. The mud acts as the matrix and all other ingredients or constituents that are put in mud acts as the reinforcement. So, this reinforcement is vegetable waste or rice husk or wheat husk. So, this acts as the reinforcement. Now, what is the need of adding these reinforcements re in the mud? One of the most important points that can be explained in a very simple and lucid manner is the arrest of cracks which may develop in mud. So, if a crack develops in mud and it will travel along the past of least, res least resistance and finally, it may result in the damage to the mud wall. But if we have reinforced mud with these important reinforcements like rice husk or wheat husk or vegetable waste, the crack will encounter any of these reinforcements, then the crack needs to have an energy higher than the failure energy or the, fail, uh, the strength failure uh, required in these particular materials or of reinforcement materials. So, that the crack can break this reinforcement into two or three parts and further progress along its desired direction, but that do not happen too often. Once the crack is travelling in the mud, it will encounter any of the reinforcement and it would be arrested there. It, it may not have that much of energy to break that reinforcement into two or three parts and move forward. So, the important point to address here is the reinforcement is added to mud in order to improve its resistance to cracks or crack propagation or in order to improve its strength or life. So, the reinforcement also acts as the crack arrester. So, if there is a crack, it would be arrested by the reinforcement and it will give a more or a higher level of service life to that particular product which has got some reinforcement as compared to a single phase material or a mud. If there would have been no reinforcement, the mud wall would have failed catastrophically. Whereas, because of the reinforcement, the cracks, few cracks have been arrested and the mud wall did not fail catastrophically because of the reinforcement which has been added. So, to classify any material as a composite material, these are the three important things that have to be taken into account. On your screen, you can again see, I will read it for you. Both constituents are present in the reasonable proportion. Composite properties are noticeably different from the properties of the constituents and a man-made composite is usually produced by intimately mixing and combining the constituents. So, if any material has been made and it satisfies these three requirements, then very comfortably and easily we can say that yes, this can be one of the examples of the composite material. Again and again, I have used these two words very uh, commonly that natural composites and synthetic composites. So, synthetic composites basically are man-made composites and natural composites are those which are existing in nature. So, one of the natural composites, uh, one example I am showing on this screen that is wood. So, in this we have a matrix and the reinforcement, the reinforcement is in terms of in type of a fiber. So, what is a matrix in wood? The matrix is a ligalin matrix and the fiber is the hemicellulose fiber. So, here you can see a one particular block of wood. In this wood, uh, annular rings are seen. So, a wood has got different properties along the length of the uh, uh, grains and across uh, or in the radial direction. So, the properties are different in the radial direction and in the longitudinal direction. Therefore, we can see that wood is a naturally occurring composite material because it has a matrix, it has got a reinforcement in the type of in the uh, in the uh, type of fibers which are uh, hemicellulose or cellulostic fibers. Now, what are the components of the synthetic composites? In the previous slides, we have seen that 
composite materials are made up of two or three different macro constituents there is a recognizable phase separating them then we have seen that there are two important types of composites naturally occurring composites in which wood is one of the examples and then there are synthetic or man made composites in synthetic composites now we are seeing that there are two major components in synthetic composites already we have seen matrix and the reinforcement so the reinforcement material that provides strength to the matrix and matrix is the material that holds the reinforcements in place on your screen you can see that this is suppose a composite material these two are the reinforcement and this is the matrix and this thin black line along this cursor shows the interface so the interface is separating the matrix and the reinforce sorry this is the matrix this gray color and this light blue color is the reinforcement so the re the interface this is the black line which is showing the interface the interface is separating the matrix this is the matrix and this is the reinforcement so the interface separates the reinforcement and the matrix so basically synthetic uh, composites or man made composites have two important macro constituents those are the reinforcement and the matrix so matrix forms the bulk and the reinforcement provides the strength and the reinforcements are the major load bearing members of the composite now what are the different types of reinforcements that go into the composite material the first and the foremost is the reinforcement in the type of fibers or in the shape of fibers then you can have particulate type of reinforcement you can have whisker type of reinforcement and we can have the reinforcement in the terms of layers so in this particular diagram you can see this bulk is the material it is a cylindrical shape and these red portion shows the ends of the fibers these fibers are running all along the length of the matrix now you can see i will just uh, draw a diagram to just explain the running of this particular fibers in the bulk of the matrix so you can see if this is a plate which is made up of a composite material we can see the fibers running all along the length and we can see the ends of the fibers as you can see on your screen so these are the ends of the fibers which are running along the length so this is the direction of the fibers and if i highlight this this particular area and i take a block from here and i highlight it in this manner here we can see these are the ends of the fibers and in between the portion that i am highlighting now is the matrix so this is the matrix and these fibers these are the fibers so we have the fibers and we have the matrix so we can see that matrix and the fibers they have been combined together in order to make a composite material and this in totality is called a composite material so we have the matrix we have the fibers and we have a composite in this particular example all the fibers are continuous fibers along this diagram we can see here this is the thickness of the composite and all these lines represents the fibers and on one end we are seeing the edges or the ends of the fiber so this is you can say one example of a composite material in which the fiber the reinforcement is in the type in the type of fibers so you can see on your screen now the fibers and the matrix so all around the green por uh, the yellow portion shows the matrix and the red portion shows the tips of the fibers so the reinforcement in this case is in the terms of fibers then 
in another case we can have the reinforcement in terms of particulates in this particular slide you can see the matrix is being represented by the yellow portion and the reinforcement is in the terms of these particulates now particulates can have a simple shape they can have they can be spherical in nature or you can they can have irregular shapes in this particular uh, composite you can see the major portion this is the matrix and the reinforcements are basically in different shapes or irregular shaped particulate reinforcement in third case we can see faceted type you have different phases suppose i take this particular reinforcement in this particular reinforcement there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 phases in this particular reinforcement there are 1 2 3 and 4 phases so within the shapes of the reinforcements we can have the fibers as the reinforcing members we can have the particles as the reinforcing members and particle reinforcement morphology is shown here the different particles can have different types of shapes we can have spherical particles we can have irregular shaped particles and we can have faceted particles also the reinforcement can be in terms of whiskers in this particular slide you can see the reinforcement is in the terms of whiskers so all the whiskers are aligned in one direction here and they can be randomly oriented whiskers in this slide also the yellow portion shows the matrix and the red portion red portion shows the whiskers or the reinforcement the reinforcement can be aligned in a particular direction depending upon the specific requirement of the part or it can be randomly oriented so whisker reinforcement morphology is shown here you till now we have seen the reinforcement can be in terms of fibers the reinforcement can be in terms of particles and the reinforcement can be in terms of whiskers and finally the reinforcement can be in terms of layers also so you can see we have different layers of fibers and this yellow portion indicates the matrix so continuous layers are put in the matrix to make a composite material so this is uh, one of the important types of polymer matrix composites in which the reinforcement is in the form of the layers the layers are made up of fibers the fibers basically can be glass fiber those can be carbon fiber those can be aramid fiber or other different types of fiber but these are the three main types of fibers which are used as reinforcing materials in the polymer matrix composites so the reinforcement can be of different types if we take examples of the particulate type of reinforcement which is very very common in metal matrix composites the matrix is in the form of a metal and the reinforcement is in the form of particulates one of the examples can be aluminum matrix reinforced with silicon carbide particles the size of the particle is very very small to the tune of few microns so reinforcements can be of different types and the matrix can also be of different types so here we can see this particular reinforcement is the reinforcement in terms of layers so we have seen that the matrix can be of different types on the basis of the chemical composition but once the matrix has been identified the reinforcement can be given in different shapes we can have fibers as the reinforcement we can have particulate reinforcement whiskers as the reinforcement and finally complete layers of the reinforcing material now let's see uh, the summary of what we have covered with the help of this particular slide so we have the broad category of composite materials composites are broadly made up of matrix and the reinforcement the matrix can be of three types we can have a polymer matrix we can have a ceramic matrix and we can have a metal matrix so any of these three materials can be taken as a matrix material and it can be reinforced with different types of secondary materials or different type of other macro constituents now on the basis of the shape you can have continuous reinforcement we can have short fibers as the reinforcement we can have whiskers as the reinforcement and we can have particulates as the reinforcement based on the orientation in the previous slide we can see we can have aligned type of reinforcement 
and we can have a randomly oriented reinforcement. On the basis of the chemical nature, we can have the reinforcement in terms of oxides, we can have reinforcement in terms of carbides, we can have reinforcement in terms of nitrides. One of the, one of the examples I have already given, we can use silicon carbide as a reinforcement material, we can take the aluminum as the matrix material as it is a metal. So, we will get a metal matrix composite. So, here we can see we can get, get, have a polymer matrix composite, we can have a ceramic matrix composite and we can have a metal matrix composite. In our series of lectures, we are focusing on two important type of materials, those are ceramic matrix composites and the polymer matrix composites. So, again this is another classification of composites, particle reinforced, fiber reinforced and structural composites. Structural composites in terms of laminates and sandwich panels, we can have re fiber reinforced in continuous reinforcement and discontinuous or short fiber reinforcement which can further be aligned or randomly oriented which we have already seen. We can have particle reinforcement in terms of large particles or dispersion strengthened reinforcement. So, we can see we have a matrix and we have a reinforcement, matrix can be of different types, reinforcement can be of different types, reinforcements can further be subclassified into based on their shape, based on their orientation and based on their chemical nature. So, broadly we can classify the synthetic composite materials into three categories that is polymeric matrix composites, metal matrix composites and ceramic matrix composites. So, you can see ceramics, metals and polymers. So, these three types of composites are broadly used and in our series of lectures, we would be focusing primarily on polymer matrix composites and metal matrix composites. So, we have seen that how composite materials are classified. So, we will stop the today's lecture at this particular point. In the next lecture, we will start our discussion with the various processing techniques of polymeric matrix composites. So, just to have a broad overview or summary of what we have covered in today's lecture, we have seen the classification of composite materials, we have seen the composite is made up of two or three different macro constituents and we have named these macro constituents as matrix and reinforcements, we have seen what is the role of the matrix, what is the role of the reinforcements, then further we have seen that what are the different types of reinforcements which can be given into a particular matrix and we have seen what are the different types of matrix materials which are used for making the composite materials. So, in the next lecture, we will be, we would be discussing the basic techniques for manufacturing of polymer matrix composites. Thank you.